Hey, Jeffrey Suey here, and for the next about 60 minutes, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the Internet Coaching Client Machine. So one of the things we'll cover is how I resurrected my dying coaching business in just five hours per week by building a client-getting web machine with one five-year-old hand-me-down computer and $123 dollars per month with no internet skills and no mind-numbing web design courses either. You're going to learn a little bit about how to wake up in five days with your own client getting money making internet marketing machine that eliminates time sucking cold calling and begging for business cards at like a networking event something like that that distracts you from changing lives with your coaching. This freedom machine that you'll learn about will give you the time, money, and new clients to escape 9 to 5, coaching full-time from your home office, taking two-month mini-retirements in Hawaii, and serving as a shining example of spiritual success for your clients, family, and friends. By the way, you'll be able to do this without one shred of techie geek ability because you'll master coaching, not programming your own website. So what you're going to learn in this video, you're going to learn how to use blogs, Web 2.0 as they call it, social media, to get new clients in your inbox, literally in your email inbox. You're going to learn the three services that autopilot your coaching lead generation and eliminate any need to chase people for business. You're also going to learn how to build all your internet marketing, your squeeze pages as we call them. You'll learn a little bit about those in just a few minutes. Your blogs, your video, your audio, your advertisements, and also your sales pages. And then you're finally, you're going to learn the easiest way to assemble all the detached dysfunctional pieces of your web strategy into one cohesive internet client machine that's ready to go to work for you cranking out coaching clients while you sleep simply by flipping the on switch so this is the personal coaching pie people talk about getting a piece of the pie well this is a piece of the well actually this is the whole personal coaching pie this personal coaching pie is $100 billion a year of spending or income, depending on which side of the equation you're on. So the point about this is that people spend around the world over $100 billion each year, every year, on personal coaching. That's the personal coaching industry that we're talking about. Now, by the way, if you're talking about personal development, uh, self-help as they call it, self-help alone is a $13 billion per year industry and it's growing at 10% every year. Those are people like Tony Robbins and uh, Brian Tracy, uh, Wayne Dyer, uh, the guys that created The Secret, the movie The Secret, and uh, this guy, uh, Joel Olstein. Uh, I guess this is a this is one of the new guys uh, on the block in the uh, self-help uh, industry, the self-help uh, niche, if you will. Again, $13 billion a year just spent on personal growth, on self-help. By the way, that means at $100 billion a year that if every coach made a million dollars a year, there would still be room for 100,000 coaches in the world. That's a lot of coaches. I can guarantee you that there probably aren't that many coaches that are working full-time currently in the world. There's a, there's a dearth of coaches out there, believe it or not, even though it seems like everybody is a coach. The people that are serious, the people that are full-time, there's much less than 100,000 coaches, I would bet you, that are really seriously running a coaching business. But the truth is that it's much more skewed than 100,000 coaches making a million dollars a year. It's much more skewed. Now what I mean by that is that the way that the income and the clients are actually divided up between coaches are 
uh, are very uh, sporadic, it's very erratic. Uh, the vast majority of personal coaches have a very small piece of this pie. It's uh, make about $20,000 a year or less. So there's a ton of personal coaches that are making that much or less. There's a few personal coaches that are making six figures that are uh, having a really nice income from their personal coaching. And then there's an even smaller group that are making a huge chunk of this personal coaching pie. The, the people that are making a million dollars in personal income plus, that are making 10 million, 20 million, 100 million or more in coaching income, or their, at least their coaching business is bringing in that kind of revenue. And these are the people like uh, Tony Robbins and the guys that we just talked about, the, uh, again, uh, Bob Proctor and uh, uh, Robert Allen, uh, Mark Victor Hansen, all sorts of individuals that are easily pulling in over a million dollars a year in revenue, probably over a million in profit as well. So again, m much less in terms of the number of people that are actually getting this big piece of the pie, but it's a huge part of the pie. It's taken up by only a very small group of coaches. So the real question that I have for you is why aren't you getting a piece of this 100 billion dollar pie or even better said uh, why aren't you getting a larger piece of this 100 billion dollar a year pie especially if you're making less than six figures right now we're gonna start answering that question during this video so let's just talk about the guys that are taking a big piece of the pie so let's talk about the individuals that created that movie the secret uh, they're definitely doing over a million dollars a year a piece I would say now, how did they do that? Uh, how did they uh, uh, how did they actually build their businesses as as nicely or as large as they did? Well, of course, they made, were made famous by this movie called The Secret. But how did they make that movie famous? Well, if you think back to when you saw the movie, you you might have heard about it from somebody else. I mean, word of mouth was one of the ways that uh, people actually shared the secret, but. Uh, you'd be amazed that chances are the first time you heard of The Secret, you probably received it in an email. You probably saw it on some website somewhere, some advertisement. You clicked through and, and you ended up right here at The Secret's website. And you probably watched the trailer for The Secret on this website. So think about this. This is a movie. This is a DVD that they were selling, a, an online movie as well. It wasn't in the theaters. It wasn't at Blockbuster, at least at first it wasn't. They did a massive push to sell this movie over the internet. This is years ago. I don't know, I think it was like three or four years ago now. This is before you know viral marketing and Web 2.0 was really made popular. So the point I wanted to make here is that the guys that got the secret famous so that they could be famous as a result of being seen in the secret and get plenty of coaching clients out of that the way that they actually made that famous is over the internet it was an internet launch if you want to call it that now what about Brian Tracy very well known personal develop development professional development guru does tons of business training around the world and what has he been up to lately? Well, I'll tell you. I know the VP of Business Development for Brian Tracy, and he created this website. And this website promotes something called ILG, which is a combination of network marketing and video training over the Internet. Again, this was launched over the Internet. This is something where they advertise. I mean, if you're on Facebook and, you, and you've and you been looking at the ads on Facebook, chances are you saw over the last year or two Brian Tracy advertising ILG over Facebook. They they did massive internet advertising. So again, notice that where Brian Tracy is turning his gaze, where Brian Tracy is putting all his focus is in web enabled online education and marketing it over the internet as well. Now what about Tony Robbins? I mean, Tony Robbins is well known as having infomercials on TV. So he used TV to get popular. He used, actually, he used uh, people that would go from meeting to meeting. They would do public speaking and actually promote his events as well. It's another big part of his business. So he's not an internet guy, is he? Well, guess what? About two years ago, I think even less than that, 
he created a blog, but not just one blog. He created three blogs. If you go to his TonyRobbins.com, you'll see that there are links to a money blog, a general blog, and also a relationship blog as well. So you think blogging is just for you know little kids that are like to write over the internet or uh, or just uh, Web 2.0 companies? Tony Robbins, a mainstream guy who made really most of his money, at least his money in uh, in his main business over TV, over late night television advertising, infomercials, basically, he's putting his resources into online marketing. So hopefully you're starting to get the point because all the guys that are taking this giant piece of the pie, the 1 million plus per year, they're online. They're using the internet. And where that pie is, where the vast majority of the personal coaching pie, the vast majority of that $100 billion a year or more of income, those hundreds of thousands of clients or followers or people that would buy your, uh, your coaching in whatever form you give it in, the vast majority of that's made over the internet at this point, in this day and age. So maybe if you're not on the internet, one of the big reasons why you're not taking a giant chunk of that piece of the pie is simply because you're not seriously marketing online. This is where it's at. Now these are some of the things that might be keeping you from doing this. Has the thought of staring at computer code for hours or hassling with web designers scared you away from growing your business online? Have you been one of the many, one of the millions of individuals of small business owners that have paid uh, $3,999 to a web design or web marketing firm and the website or the property that they created made you zero dollars, made you no money. They just made a pretty website, basically. It was just a waste. Or have you been just so busy cold calling clients, begging for referrals, giving away business cards to the local chamber of commerce, let's say, that your internet marketing is just emailing your prospects and chatting on Facebook? That's the extent of your internet marketing. You call that internet marketing. Chances are, if you answered yes to any of those questions, you're stuck in the mud. You're stuck and you haven't moved forward with your internet marketing, at least at the speed that you'd like to. The fact is, though, that this is not your fault. The reason I say it's not your fault is because there are some secrets that the web gurus haven't told you. There's one major secret that they hold back. And it's really not a secret, but it's something that they like to keep a secret and they don't say. And it's something that, frankly, a lot of people that are following the web gurus, a lot of people that are really not successful online, they perpetuate the fact that this is something that people just don't talk about. And we're going to get to why in the next couple minutes. This secret has to do with what I call the spiral of the stagnant coach. And the first secret is that there is no secret. We like to think as small business owners, we like to think as coaches who want to get clients that you know there's some secret that if we learn it someday that it'll all just work out. And we just haven't learned the secret yet. The real secret is that it, the real secret is it's about action. It's about getting things done. The people who got things done before, before there was the internet, before there was internet marketing, well, they did really well before the internet was around. And if they continue to be action-oriented people, guess what? They're doing well now. They're doing better and better and better, and they're probably using the internet if they're still taking action in the area of the internet. Now, if they're not taking action in the area of the internet, they're possibly getting hurt right now. Their business isn't doing so well. But the point is here, the two big secrets that I'm going to share right up front with you is that, first of all, there is no secret. Second, is that it's about action. It's just about implementation. It's about execution. It's about getting the stuff done. So let me ask you a question. How much time did you spend on your web strategy last week, your internet marketing for your coaching business? How much time did you spend? So just fill your answer in in this little part of the screen. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but just think about it. 
How many hours did you spend? If you spent less than five hours or around that time, and you know this is important already, you know it's going to make a difference, you know what I just already said to you about how the big piece of the pie is online, then I have to ask you, doesn't that seem a little odd? Doesn't it seem a little odd that you know that you should be spending more time doing this, you know that you should put some real time and energy into it consistently, not just one week, but you don't? Kind of makes you scratch your head a little bit, doesn't it? So I actually had a very similar challenge originally online, but even before that, I had a challenge with an area that I really wanted to spend time with, or I wanted to spend time in. Uh, originally, uh, a long time ago before I became a coach, uh, I was a professional musician. I played the saxophone. And I studied for five years uh, at a conservatory. I actually played professionally in New York. I traveled the world uh, playing gigs as a professional musician. And then after a while, after school uh, ended, I decided, you know what, i got to get kind of realistic. I need to stop playing for a while and figure out how I'm going to make money. I'm going to make my way professionally because, you know, making money playing the saxophone, uh, you know, chances are there are gonna be, there's going to be more uh, month at the end of the money, if you will. There, you're not going to be able to quite make ends meet, at least at first. So you've got to figure out how to make some money beyond just playing gigs. So I stopped playing for a while, and I got really ambitious, and I started doing other things. And I got caught up in these other things, and for years, I didn't play the saxophone. I just I didn't touch it. And then I actually moved out to San Diego, and I went to work for Tony Robbins. You might have heard that story a long time ago, because uh, I've made videos about that. And I still didn't play. For years, I didn't play. And all my friends were like, you know what? You've got this really cool thing that you get to do. People love it. I mean, people like are drawn to you because you play the saxophone, and you're not doing it, you're not even touching it. In fact, if you played the saxophone in San Diego, because you were one of the better players in New York, you'd probably be like one of the best sax players you know, in the city. I mean, it's a very large city, too. You'd be like one of the top call saxophonists. And for a long time, I just wouldn't do it. And I realized that the reason I didn't do it was I was so busy thinking I was busy. I was too busy. I would say to myself, I'm just too busy for that. I can't get around to that right now. I'll get to that later. And after a while, I worked with a really great coach. Luckily, I'm kind of a poster boy for coaching, as I've mentioned before. And he worked with me on my mindset. I finally got to the point where I said, you know what? I feel like I'm successful enough now that I, my business is going well enough now that I can start playing again. And I really, I, you know, I fixed up my saxophone. I started playing again. And literally within like three, four months, I was playing paying gigs in San Diego. And I was getting better and better and better. I was like relearning the saxophone within months. And it was, it was so much fun. And... Literally, I realized after I started again that I had not played for seven years. Seven years. This is like one of the more important things in my life. And the biggest reason I wasn't playing was simply because I didn't think I had the time. And by the time I started playing again, I said, I'm never going to stop again. I'm never going to quit again. I'm always going to play at some level. And uh, I'm, you know, at least once a week, I'm going to take out my horn, I'm going to play a gig, I'm going to go to a rehearsal, I'm going to do something. Because it balances me out. It was such a joy for me. And I'm really grateful to this day that I still play. Because it, it's a real balance, especially, you know, with the stresses and the challenges of business sometimes, where I still spend a huge majority of my time. So why did I share that with you? Why did I tell you that story? Because really, the way that I looked at the saxophone is the way that I looked at internet marketing before I got started. And my bet would be that the way that I looked at the saxophone, not playing, holding off on actually getting into it, diving and putting some serious time into it just to see what happens, might be the same way that you are looking at your internet marketing. You're putting it off for some day. Maybe you'll get to it when it, things are right. And this is part of the spiral of the stagnant coach. So let me draw it out for you. This is the mindset, as we talked about before. It's the no time mindset. I just don't have time for that right now. Now, what does that mindset create, especially in business, if you're not putting time into some of the important things like your internet marketing in business? Well, it perpetuates a low value activity level. 
In other words, you do a lot of low value activity, things that are shorter term in nature. You do a lot of prospecting, you do a lot of cold calling, you do a lot of networking, things that, you know, they'll get you something. They're not no value. They've got some value, but that's the problem. That's the trap is they're lower value. Most things that we do that give us value in the short term give us very little value in the long term. If you prospect for four hours today, you just call a bunch of people up and try to offer them coaching, you know, that's not going to give you a lot of long-term value. It'll give you a little bit, but not that much. It'll give you a, a, a lot more short-term value. You probably get a client out of it, let's say. But the fact is that internet marketing is not going to give you value next week, probably. You're not going to get anything out of it, right? This might be why you don't do it, maybe, because you don't have time to do something that would be higher value in the long term. But the fact is it would give you huge value in the long term, just like I said. So no time mindset creates low value activities and what we call short-term type of activities. And that perpetuates a living from client to client type of basis. You do a bunch of stuff to get a client, you get a client, and you're like, oh, all right, I finally got a client. Now I can like relax for a second. But guess what? That client doesn't stick around forever. And all of a sudden the client leaves and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to get another client. And you do short-term activities again. You do low value activities. Why? Because when you live client to client, how do you think? That's right. You have a no time mindset. I live client to client, so I have no time. So I'm going to do low value activities, so I live client to client. And it goes nowhere. This road, if you're on this road, it leads to nowhere. You are going nowhere with your coaching business. Chances are. Now, hey, look, it's okay to just stay where you are. It's okay to tread water sometimes because sometimes you just need to survive. You just need to make ends meet. Sometimes there's lessons to be learned there, and I think that's great. That's admirable. But just because it's admirable and you can pat yourself on the back for it doesn't mean that it's going to give you your dreams. It doesn't mean that it's going to give you your destiny as a coach. Now, by the way, you might be asking, well, okay, Jeff, but, but what if you do spend more than five hours per week on your web strategy? You know, I'm one of those people. Well, okay, let's talk about that. There might be three possibilities. And what I mean by that is there might be three possibilities as to why things aren't working for you. You're not making money online yet. You're not getting any clients from the Internet yet. The first possibility is just lag time. You just, you know, you, you need to do, do this type of work for another three months, four months, whatever it is. And then eventually the results will catch up with the work that you're already doing. Second possibility is that you just have a bad strategy. Something's wrong with your market, the market, the niche market that you've chosen. You're marketing, what, how you're marketing to that market. Your product, you might just have a lousy coaching product or something that uh, that market doesn't want. Or your sales, like when you get the leads, you're doing something that's making it so nobody ultimately buys coaching from you, at least from an online source. So it could just be bad strategy. And then finally, the final possibility is that you're leapfrogging. Now what is leapfrogging? Well, this is part of what I call the leapfrogging loop. And it comes from another mindset, what we call the magic wand mindset. This is for people that really are putting time into their web strategy. Generally speaking, a lot of people that vigorously pursue web strategy, they have kind of a magic wand mindset. They think that you know someday they're going to ma wave a magic wand and things are going to work out, that they're going to have some kind of uh, easy way to get where they want to go. There's got to be an easier way than what I'm doing currently. There's got to be something that's easy for me. Everyone else must have some secret strategy. The people that are doing well, they got to have some secret strategy. I just have to find the magic wand. I just have to find that secret. That's the magic wand mindset. That's part of the leapfrogging loop. Now, how does the magic wand, how does the magic wand mindset create this loop, this leapfrogging loop? Well, First of all, you do half-assed execution. When you think that the strategy that you're working on is something that's going to make it easy for you, that's going to be like, oh, this is going to be no problem, this is going to be no struggle, this is the internet, it should be easy, right? Well, when you think it's going to be easy, well, then your execution is half-assed, generally speaking. And half-assed execution leads to you leapfrogging to a new strategy. What I mean by that is anything that's executed half-assed doesn't work out. And when it doesn't work out, you're thinking, 
well, this isn't the magic wand, so I got to go somewhere else. So you leapfrog to the next strategy, and then that leads to more half-assed execution. You just keep trying new stuff, trying new stuff, trying new stuff, thinking, well, this one's going to be the strategy. Oh, no, that wasn't it. So it's got to be something else. As if the perfect strategy would make all the difference. And I'm not saying strategy isn't helpful. That's one of the reasons why the magic wand mindset is so seductive that it's partially true that there are some really great magic wands out there. There are some really great strategies. But there really is no magic wand when it comes down to it. Really, as we talked about before, the real secret is that there is no secret, and it's all about getting it done. It's all about action. It's all about implementation. And that's where chances are your, strat your challenge is. And by the way, leapfrogging is another challenge of implementation. What I mean by that is if you kind of implement something half-assed and you move on to another strategy you really didn't implement even if you pat yourself on the back for spending all that time you still really didn't implement your strategy fully now I talked about being a saxophonist before and uh, we're gonna enter into a, a section where I like to call it great music equals great marketing and I used to think my sax playing gave me nothing to help my business nothing to help my marketing later I noticed some similarities between them Getting coaching clients is just like achieving a perfect sax performance. Now, in saxophone playing, there's the player, that's you in this metaphor, and then there's the saxophone. And in this metaphor, that's your marketing machine. There's the player, and there's the saxophone. And to create a great performance, they need to work in unison, of course. So you and your saxophone, you and your marketing machine, need to work in unison. Now, if you're gonna great if you're gonna create great music from your saxophone, uh, there's a couple things that need to be in place. Now think of your music that would come from the saxophone as your coaching in this metaphor. And of course, again, your marketing machine, that's your saxophone. So your sax is your marketing machine, your music is your coaching. Now, if you want to create great coaching and a great coaching business, well, your marketing machine is going to be instrumental in that. Marketing is the instrument of your coaching. Now you could be this great musician and still have a lousy sax performance because your marketing machine, your saxophone, wasn't well built, wasn't put together right. It's not working and all of a sudden the music, the coaching that comes out, well, it doesn't sound so good, no matter how great you are. If your marketing machine sucks, it doesn't matter. You need to learn, you need to know how to play this instrument that we call marketing in this case. You need to understand how it works. Sax players, it turns out, are very interested in their instruments. I can share this from personal experience. Uh, they get involved with the design of their instruments, with the tuning of their instruments. Uh, I, I went through probably four or five saxophones before I finally found my perfect instrument, my perfect machine to create great music with. Saxophone players, they know that the instrument is the amplifier, the critical element that makes or breaks the performance. So no matter how great a musician you are, if your amplifier isn't working well, th that amplification isn't going to come out quite right. The instrument amplifies the great musician within, so to speak. So what happens if you take the best parts and just throw a sax together in a hurry. You just take all these great saxophone parts, all the best little strategies for creating a great stra saxophone, but you just throw them together. You just, you know, you don't have a lot of time, so you just throw them together in a hurry. This is what most coaches do. Your saxophone would fall apart. Your marketing machine would fall apart if you take even great marketing tactics and just throw them together with no cohesive strategy. In order for it to work, all the pieces have to come together. You got to build the parts, you got to put them together, and you got to get them working. You got to get them working perfectly. 
Now, what if the bell fell off of my saxophone? How's it going to sound, right? What if the upper assembly wasn't connected? You know, I just didn't connect the upper assembly that day. <laughs> How would things sound? See, 99% in building a beautiful, perfect, perfectly tuned machine like this equals nothing. You miss 1%, you got nothing. And it's the same with your marketing. 99% if you've even been working your butt off at your marketing. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. That's nothing. Once you put it all together and you start to blow a few notes on this instrument of yours, and you can s hear some sound come through it, even if it's not perfect, in other words, you get some clients, then that's what inspires you to really tune it up and get it working well. In this video, you're going to learn how to assemble that machine, that marketing machine, so it works. And you're going to learn how to do it in five days. Because the fact is, this machine, this saxophone, this instrument, this marketing machine is the instrument of you getting clients. It's the instrument of your coaching. Mastering marketing equals clients. Plus, you're going to learn to program yourself with a mindset to master the marketing machine that drives your coaching business for life. Before we start, though, I'm going to give you a brief taste of where I've been able to go uh, or travel to uh, because of not just the money and being able to afford to go there, but also having the time and flexibility in my schedule because my marketing machine was doing the real heavy lifting for me in uh, producing the results and the revenue and the clients in my business. And then uh, a little bit after I actually show you where I've actually been able to go, I'm going to give you a little bit of a sense of how you can set yourself up to be able to work from anywhere as well. Let's take a look. This is just a gorgeous day in the Plaza de Armas, which is our central kind of Spanish plaza in Cusco. And uh, so I wanted to catch some of these shots while we uh, had a chance. Call of the day, so uh, come on and turn around and walk with me here. Actually, about 8,000 years old. On the other side of the Andes. They're trying to hack through the road. So we're on a river. I don't know what the river is, but it's warm. It's definitely warmed up a lot. Falling at a night, probably about three to four knots. through the set. 
sediments at the side of the river and try to find gold. The local politicians. So we're here at the Doubletree in San Diego and I'm going to show you how I set myself up to be able to coach anytime, anywhere, uh, even when I'm out of the country. So I've got my uh, trusty laptop and my phone and all my uh, uh, equipment so I can communicate with people all over the world uh, over the internet or over uh, uh, teleconference lines and uh, let's go take a look at how it's done. So whenever you're coaching and you're on the road or you're out of the country, uh, there's a couple things. Number one is, of course, you're going to want a way to kind of just manage your calls and you know take notes and things like that. So you can, of course, do that on your laptop. Uh, if you uh, are more for kind of freehand writing, you can use LegalPad. Um, I always like to have my hardbound journal around just for anything that, you know, ideas that come up for me or uh, uh, literally notes that I want to take while I'm traveling. Um, beyond that also, uh, of course, talking to your clients is going to be a big issue. So, you know, most, of the t most countries you're in, you're probably going to have no problem finding a way to get your cell phone to hook up. You can get a SIM card uh, for the local country or uh, if, if you're in the States, you know, chances are your roaming will cover it. Uh, I always like to make sure that my audio is going to put me in the zone for my coaching sessions. So I'm going to have my little Bluetooth headset on. And then I also want uh, just to kind of keep any you know, ambient noise from kind of getting into my head, I want to get a little uh, earplug and just put it in my free ear and then I'm not going to hear anything other than my client at that point. Now if I'm in, a, if I'm in another continent, I'm in another country, uh, I probably am not going to be using my cell phone because of the long distance rates. Although sometimes you can call the states, uh, you can call a lot of countries without uh, spending a lot on your long distance, you just get a SIM card for your cell phone. But a lot of times I'll just use Skype and all Skype tapes is, takes is my laptop and I just get my little USB headset, plug this in, I'm plugged into my USB, plug it into my computer here and in a couple minutes I get a Wi-Fi connection wherever I'm at, uh, I'm going to be uh, able to call uh, you and do a coaching session with you uh, from literally any place in the world. I hope that gave you a little bit of an idea of just what's possible and just hopefully whet your appetite a little bit, uh, but also gave you a sense of how simple and eventually easy it actually can be for you to set yourself up uh, literally to coach from just about anywhere. Now, this is what I like to call an urgent opportunity. And let me give you a little bit of an idea why. 
Now we've already talked about this a little bit, but I'm going to give you some more detail. Uh, coaching as a profession uh, is a multi-hundreds of billions opportunity. Uh, multi-hundreds of billions per year is spent in the coaching, the advice, and the information industry. These are uh, kind of kissing cousins in terms of industries. There's the advice industry, which is similar to coaching, and there's a lot of similar things that happen to coaching. And then the information industry, where people are still trying to get help, but they're just trying to get the how-to type of help. They're trying to learn uh, the knowledge rather than actually uh, get help with the mindset or the execution or somebody holding their hand in the process. Multi-hundreds of billions are made. So let me tell you a little bit about a guy named John Sperling. He has 500,000 clients. He actually owns University of Phoenix. They do about $3 billion in revenue per year. How did they make that money? That's right, online. They have online campuses. That's what they're known for. So this is someone who is a multi-billionaire who's, you know, you couldn't really call him a coach, but he is definitely in the information and the education and the advice industry in terms of helping people get information and get educated in a distance learning format, which is, again, very similar to how coaches have actually built their professions by working from home, working telephonically, and actually doing, uh, doing distance learning or distance coaching, if you will. Now, by, by the way, one of the things that you may not realize this is something I heard just a couple months ago was that the market capitalization, the actual size of Apple as a company, has now exceeded the size of Microsoft. Their uh, total value of the company, their, what they call the market cap or the market capitalization, is larger than Microsoft's now. Now, why did that happen? I mean, did Apple sell more computers than Microsoft? Well, Microsoft doesn't sell computers, but did Apple sell uh, more of its form of computing, its computer and its uh, uh, software package, its uh, uh, user interface, etc., than Microsoft did? No. No, they didn't. But they sold enough, and they sold it for a lot more than Microsoft generally made per computer or per operating system that it sold. Now, what is Apple known for, especially as compared to Microsoft? Now, they both you know, make something, make operating systems, they make computing platforms, no doubt about that. But what is Apple better at, at least in computers, than Microsoft? That's right, publishing, uh, creating information, uh, um, stylizing and organizing and designing information, whether it be in desktop publishing or video production. I'm using an Apple right now, I'm using a Mac. Uh, in the organization of implementation or uh, the organization of information. Microsoft, you can do it on a Microsoft machine, but it's nowhere near as cool as doing it as, uh, on an Apple machine. It's nowhere near as easy or user-friendly or especially bug-free. So Apple is the engine for people that create information, that create advice, that uh, educate people. In fact, if you didn't remember, I don't know if you were around back then, but you know, when I was growing up, when I was going to school, we didn't have Microsoft machines. We didn't have DAWs computers in our uh, in our classrooms. That's right. We had Apple computers because Apple was known as the education computer. They have always had a great uh, a relationship with higher education. In fact, the one of the co-founders, I mean, that he's an educator. Right? So education, information, publishing, sharing and designing and, and, and packaging knowledge, uh, packaging information, this is all what Apple is all about. And the people that have been providing these hundreds of billions of dollars worth of information, coaching, advice, etc., they use Apple computers, many of them at least. Now, what's the other side of Apple? That's right, it's not just computers. Apple is all about iPods now, right? Or the iPad. And what do the iPods and the iPads do? Are they really great computing platforms? Are they really good places to like crunch numbers and do a spreadsheet or big business applications? Of course not. What do you do with an iPod? You listen to music, you watch some videos, right? Maybe listen to some audiobooks. What do you do with an iPad? You can do some work, but it's limited in that area. It's very limited. What do you do with it though? That's right. You consume information. 
you check out NewYorkTimes.com, you uh, listen, you watch videos, uh, you play video games, you uh, go to iTunes and download stuff, you surf the internet, you consume information. In fact, they even set up uh, the, the iPad to, so it looks like a book. So you just flip pages and the, on the touch screen and it's like an e-reader. So you consume information, knowledge, education, right? So Apple has both sides of this market. I mean, they own both sides of the market for creating and uh, polishing up and designing the information and knowledge and coaching, etc. Entertainment, if you want to call it that. Entertainment is just a form of information when it comes down to it. And also for people to actually consume the information better. Microsoft wasn't quite as interested in that area. So I think my guess is, and again, I'm not educated in this area as well as I probably should be, but my guess would be that the reason why Apple is now exceeding Microsoft is that information, knowledge, coaching, and education in all its forms of producing it and consuming it is becoming more and more important in the world and it's only going to become more important. This is a trend that's not stopping anytime soon. That's why they're building all these machines so we can consume this information. The reason that Apple would build an iPad the way that they built it is because they know. I mean they've done a little bit of market research in this area. Probably millions of dollars worth of market research. They know how many people want to consume information, want to listen to music, want to watch videos, want to read ebooks. Right? That's why they made it, and that's where they've sold out like the first day that they went to market with their new iPad that doesn't even have a USB port, right? For like a thousand dollars. You could buy a computer for that nowadays, but people don't want a computer, they want to consume information. You get the idea? Ebooks, by the way, there's Jobs holding up his ebook reader, his iPad, and then uh, uh, Jeff Bezos holding up his, uh, his Kindle for Amazon. Ebooks were up 71% last year. The sale of ebooks were up 71% last year alone. They exceeded audiobooks in terms of the actual purchase that, that's happening there. That is a trend, that's a big deal. This is all information, advice, stuff that you can consume. You know, books like this, Awaken the Giant Within, right? Again, more numbers here. Self-help, $13 billion. We talked about that. That industry is $13 billion a year, growing by 10%. Online learning is a $27 billion a year industry, and it's going to be doubling in the next four years. $27 billion that will double in the next four years of how much people will spend on online learning. Coaching is a part of that, by the way, if you offer it online. Personal coaching, we talked about this before, it's a $100 billion a year industry. And finally, this is the big one, information products. Did you know that information products are a $400 billion a year industry? When you look online, you can buy a DVD set or a CD set or an e-book, or you can, you, know, you can buy a how-to manual, right? or you order these types of products, whether it be over the internet or not, 40, uh, or $400 billion a year. A little bit of money spent on information products. And by the way, information products, if you're a coach, chances are you got some knowledge to share or you're going to gain some knowledge that you need to share, and you could package up your coaching into an information products, and wham, you're part of a $400 billion a year industry right there. By the way, uh, this, these are statistics. Now we're going to take a little bit of advice from the guru. This is like the uber mentor of all business, a guy named Peter Drucker. Now, if you're not familiar with business, Drucker is like is like Jesus Christ in business, right? Everybody listens to Drucker. Everybody reads Drucker. Peter Drucker is known as the man who invented management. How's that for a, uh, uh, a little bit of respect from your peers, right? This is a place where he's published in Business Week. He's written numerous uh, titles and, and books. And this is what Drucker said. Universities won't survive this century. Learning will happen outside the typical classroom. Hmm. I wonder where that learning is going to happen. Well, online, of course, as we talked about, it's $27 billion worth just this year alone. It will be doubling over the next four years. But also in coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching, group coaching, mentoring, training, seminars, things like that. Outside the typical 
classrooms. And again, some universities are going to step up and they will survive, but many won't survive the century. And then they did a, literally Forbes did a front page article with Peter Drucker talking about webucation being the next great growth opportunity. Here's what Drucker said in the article. Online education is the next great growth opportunity and the future of education. It is a global market worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Now again, if you think about higher education, we're talking about billions of billions that are spent on higher education every year around the world. This is the future of education, according to Drucker. It's a pretty big deal. Hundreds of billions of dollars. Online education. Might be an important area to get into. Now, what does this have to do with coaches? Again, you're an online educator, if you choose to be. You can coach online. I mean, you know, I mean, if you probably watched a few of my videos where I gave you coaching over a video, right? It's a pretty cool way to coach, I have to admit. And it's a great way to actually get into online education as well, get into this field. Let's move on. So hopefully you're getting the point again here that online coaching is where you want to be if you want to make money and help people now in this day and age. This is where the giant piece of the pie is. It's online education, online coaching. Now you might have seen this from one of our videos where I actually tracked uh, how my business almost died uh, and I was basically just, you know, it was on life support. Uh, and this was a little bit after 2008 when the recession had begun and, and we had lost two-thirds of our business or more. And this is when I started to realize this thing that I'm sharing with you now that uh, really online is where it's at and it's a huge part of where we can get our revenue from. After I figured that out, I started building our internet coaching client machine and we went from, you know, 30, 40,000 in debt. Well, actually, it was a little less debt than that, but it was a lot of debt. And... Uh, we paid off all our debt, and then now we're making currently about twenty thousand a month. We we're I was saying ten to twenty at the time that I made this video because I wanted to be kind of conservative. But you know, our last uh, uh, like I think four or five months of revenue have been twenty thousand dollars every single month. Ninety nine percent of that's like online revenue. I'm going to show you that in this video. By the way, the other cool thing is that when I was making the thirty thousand a month. I wasn't making that constantly. I had you know months where I was making that. A lot of that I was working my butt off for. I was working every single day, and a lot of it was offline. A lot of it was active. I didn't work. I don't get paid. Now, where we're making the ten to twenty thousand a month, most of this revenue is passive income, or at least is leverage. It's like where I'm one to many. I'm coaching a group rather than one on one, where I got to be there all the time for that one person. So just a little bit, I've covered this in past videos, so I'm not going to cover this in detail right now, but last year, 2009, just launch, launches that we did. These were special launches that we did for different products, different education online. We did 57000 in revenue and you know like 50 clients that we got just through our launches. Our continuity income, in other words, coaching income, was almost 10000 a month on average. We had about 70, 80 clients from that. So we had hundreds of clients last year in 2009, and again, about ten to 20,000 a month, and that was our second year online. How's that for pretty amazing and quick growth? So let me show you a little bit more detail into, or let me show you a little bit more detailed view of what our business looks like and where these numbers come from. Let's take a look. So first of all, and I know this is uh, like overkill sometimes, but uh, uh, you know, a while ago I shared some of our merchant statements that showed us making thirty thousand a month uh, when we were actually doing that. And I just want to show you what we're doing now. These are recent statements, you know, from my merchant provider, just to actually show you uh, the you know the daily income that we're actually producing. So if you'll take a look at this, this is our you know what they call the credit transaction summary. And you can actually see here, you can actually see uh, the you know the income that we make and on a on just about a daily basis. And you can see the the hundreds and the thousands that are brought in. And this is just you know I believe like a period of one or two months. Uh, now let's move on to specific merchant statements. So uh, this is I believe February. You can see this is the total amount submitted. It's uh, over twenty thousand right there. And uh, then you can go on and on and, and look at all the, the daily amounts. 
and moving on to a different one. This is, uh, I believe, uh, March. And this is, again, it's a $20,000 month just in terms of the merchant account. And we do get checks in as well. So we made over 20000 in this particular uh, month as well. Uh, minus merchant fees, just about 20000 19000 and something. So the bottom line is that uh, you know we're pulling in this kind of revenue right now in this economy, in this market, and literally, again, it's been about two and a quarter years by the time these merchant accounts showed, showed up from the day I started seriously marketing online. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about how we manage all the leads that actually come in to the company. So this is something is actually an online spreadsheet that uh, our administrator and our coaches share and they can actually go here live on the internet and look at it and we actually have a list of leads that came in uh, that either the coaches brought in or I brought in uh, over the internet and uh, we put them all on this you know general spreadsheet so we know who's running sessions with who basically and then the actual results that uh, showed up from those sessions and you can see as we run down this list I'm gonna try not to show any names here too into too detailed away, but you could see different sources, like a bunch of these came from different coaches, a bunch of them came from uh, speaking engagements, but a lot of them came from like partners, uh, like Dwayne's a partner of ours, uh, and some of these actually came from online uh, as well. And you can see I can go on and on and on with the leads that we've actually brought in uh, over the last couple years, much of which actually came from online. Here's another uh, list of leads that we got. We get from one of our partners, and uh, you can see as as we go down this list, you know, these are mainly from 2010 that these actual leads came in, and uh, and literally there you can see the number of leads generated. You know, there are weeks where we got three or four, weeks where we got you know 15, 20, 30 leads. You know, different amounts uh, any particular month, and we have notes from the coaches on what actually happened and who uh, uh, enroll in coaching. I think we brought in like, I don't know, 20 or 30 clients just this year alone from uh, this partner. His name's Eric Lawfoam. And uh, we actually, because of our, our web expertise, we created a special site just for Eric, uh, which is ericlawfoamcoaching.com. You can play this little video here. And uh, literally, there I am again. And, uh, and I actually get people to opt in and become leads they watch this little 30 minute video basically and Eric sends traffic uh, or he has sent traffic to this particular page after a while Eric said well can you do something a little bit more simple for us and so we actually created these little simple little landing pages this one's for people getting out of their comfort zone comfort zone coaching session this one's for network marketers uh, and these are just very simple what we call squeeze pages and Eric sends traffic to these pages we wouldn't be able to do business with Eric if we didn't have two things. Number one, fantastic coaches, which that's one of the reasons Eric works with us. But another big reason is that we're online savvy. I mean, I built these pages for, for us. You know, this is this is my website that I, I built and created uh, to, to set up a, a, a way for Eric and I to work together efficiently. So when you get better at the internet piece, when you learn more about it, when you have capabilities to build this stuff, it's not just that you get some results from it, like more clients and more money and more freedom, etc., but you get into kind of a private club. You get into a little club that it only consists of people who are online savvy, who are online marketers. And guess what? Most of those online marketers are quite successful, too. And they want to work with you. They don't want to work with somebody who doesn't know anything about that, who's not, not comfortable with it, who can't handle it, who doesn't have the capabilities. So you got to build these capabilities because that's where you know all our business is coming from. If it doesn't come from online, it comes from partnerships with people who have a, an online ability, and they need us to have that ability as well. And so we find a way to, to bring their clients to us via an online gateway, if you will. And finally, this is one of our dashboards that we use, and we actually uh, track different aspects of how we generate leads. So you can see the leads numbers that we generate. This is a daily number, anywhere between you know five and ten leads we actually bring in daily. And then uh, we actually have started to actually segment out those leads, whether they come from our blog or come from our paid advertising. If I scroll down 
low enough. Here you go, and we can actually see that there are certain leads are coming from the blog, certain leads coming from AdWords, etc. You can also see, you know, our sales that we bring in that day, and the deposits and expenses and things like that that we track on a daily basis. I can actually show you a graph of this as well, because uh, we graph out how many leads are coming in, so I can see kind of the heartbeat of the business, what makes the business run. So you might ask at this point, well, Jeff, that's great for your business, but have you really helped other people do this? Well, let's take a look. Uh, these are some of my clients I'm going to show you. So uh, here is a gentleman, his name's John Caron, and I've been working for with him for about six months now. And we didn't build any of this for him, but uh, I'm going to mute that now so we don't have to actually listen to him. But uh, but this is this is John's website, and people come to this website every single day via the strategies I've taught him and opt in. He gets coaching new coaching leads on a consistent basis. I just gave him some coaching on this uh, uh, squeeze page just the other day, and so he you know he has a veritable coaching business that he built based upon some pretty simple stuff. And uh, he did this all himself, and he's you know he's not a tech wizard by by any means, but he was just willing to take a lot of action, and uh, and make things work. So uh, that's John. Now there's Mickey O'Brien, and Mickey uh, was working with us about a year ago, and uh, he went through some of our early web trainings, and he built a nice a nice blog. You can see his a decent blog here. He's got. Uh, you know, uh, hundreds of fans on his Facebook page already. And he's got videos on this site, and he's literally getting clients, tons of clients, partly as a result of his web presence that he's built here with MickeyO'Brien.com. It's another gentleman, uh, A.G. Morishta, and A.G. is actually on our team, but he has his own coaching business as well, and this is his blog, and uh, he's got people opting in on his little sidebar here, and uh, he's got, uh, I believe, somewhere between 50 and 100 hits on this site, on this blog, uh, you know, literally each day, every single day. And he's, you know, here he's doing a profile of of Gandhi, and you can see he's got all these people tweeting his stuff. And I mean, it's just, it's just fantastic. And he's got videos on this blog, etc. You know, these are things that partly I've taught him, and obviously he's getting educated all over the place, but. Um, but he's taking action partly as a result of the work that he's doing uh, with us here at JHS Advisors as well. The point of the matter is simple. That not only in my own business, but also businesses of many coaches that we've worked with, they are making money, getting clients, and changing the world via their online web presence and their ability to turn those leads that are coming in online into paying coaching clients in their groups, in their one-on-one -on -one coaching, in their trainings, and also in their products as well. But beyond that, I think what's most important is not just the clients and the money. I mean, that's something that... that uh, is obviously is is the as I mentioned the instrument through which you ultimately get the music of coaching, but the real beauty of this is that you get to do what you love and you get to kind of become that guru for people that uh, that you know you probably hope to become or you'd like to become even more of that master coach for the people that you touch. I'm going to share with you a, just a, a real quick graduation video from our last coaches training and you'll see you know these coaches glowing not just from getting certified and getting good at coaching but you know they had been coaching tons for the, that last two months that they were working with us and they were building their coaching businesses but most importantly they were just enjoying becoming master coaches in their own right. So let's take a look. So this is the JTS Advisors Master Coach Certification Training Completion and Commencement Ceremony. And we're here to acknowledge those who successfully completed both the eight-week immersion training and also the three-day Master Coach Certification training that we just had. So first, I want to personally acknowledge you for completing the training. So give everyone get yourself a round of applause. And this is really exciting for me really exciting for all of us because especially in the eight week you got to play full out in order just to stay in the process
Dave, you exemplify that to the highest degree because you never gave up on himself. I'm really proud of him. So, great job. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored and I feel so proud. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge <clears throat> my husband, the love of my life. So I wasn't looking to learn how to coach, but that's what I got. And I wasn't looking to change my life, because I thought a lot of it was in order, but I changed more in the last eight weeks than I've changed in the last eight years. I, I took things that I could use immediately in coaching in the church, and right now, uh, because of JTS, our church, I know we're at a healthier place than we've ever been in the 14 years since I planted it. And So I'm now going to share with you the agreements of a coach. You're giving your word to be someone who's a stand for causing the power of coaching to make a difference. It's not just something that you do when you're giving a coaching session, but that's who you are with your family. That's who you are with your friends. That's who you are in the workplace. A coach is who you become in life. These skills will work within any area that you go into in your life. However, if you're going to continue the game, those are the agreements of becoming a coach. Keep your word. Don't ever give up. And create your life the way you choose and never take less than who you are. I declare you as JTS Advisors, Master Coach, certified, and the commencement ceremonies complete. Congratulations. because it's not just the measures, it's not just the coursework, it's not just the assignments. It's who you become as a graduate of the JTS Advisors Master Coach Certification Training. beautiful that's really what uh, coaching is all about it's about the joy of knowing that you're gonna change the world the joy of knowing that you flat deliver for someone where nobody else could make that kind of difference for them and you flat save their life change their life and and turn things around for them because you were their coach and you had the master coaching skills but you also were able to find them online or find them somehow in order to actually get access to coach them and this is the part that most coaches miss it's such a tragedy to miss out on that.